Hello and welcome to workshop 3.1 CFD for global mesh controls. Um, so in this one, uh, we'll be looking at a few objectives, which is um, again, starting access meshing, generating a mesh and using some advanced size functions for uh, curvature proximity. And again, looking for some inflation as well. So one of the key things, what we need to do here is to start the project. So um, drag and drop a mesh component and you should have all the files that's needed so what we want to do is import in a new geometry browse and the one that we want to look for is called the main gear clean stp file so press open that and as i said before just open up design modeler um, is the best way to just generate make sure the model is there so it can be transferred so we'll see import just press generate you'll see your model has come through yeah, you're happy with this file, close design modeler. And before we go into the meshing, there's going to be a few options uh, that we want to do is to look at the um, graphics. Actually, these options can be done in access meshing. So we'll just double click on access meshing. So whilst ANSYS meshing has loaded up, you will see this quick launch over here. So if you just type in graphics here, and one, the one that we want is the mechanical highlight selection. And in this, the highlight selection, we can see it's a single sided. We can change this one to both sides. And the other option, what we want to do is go to mechanical on the left hand side. Um, and it's the mechanical graphics. So mechanical graphics here. Uh, mesh visibility, or this is automatic, change that to manual. Okay, um, press OK, and that's now set up ready for this section. On. So what we want to do is we want to get into the inside of this uh, uh, volume. So if you right click on this, sorry, if you right click on this, you can press um, hide um, surface or hide faces, or as you see, you can press F8 on the keyboard and it will hide that face so we can see inside. So once we've got that, now we've got this section here, we can move on and plan what we need to do. So it's a symmetry model. The arrangement of the geometry of presence are complex. There's some curved uh, geometry and some sweepable volumes as well. Um, so tetrahedron method combined with advanced size functions to capture the curvature. Um, and the inflation will be used for the mesh to independ um, intend for any external aerodynamic analysis using on the boundary layers uh, resolution as required. So the first thing that we want to do is use the face tool, make sure plus Z on there. Again, use the box select. Um, again, box select here, you can change from here. Um, go to box select or single select, or you can use the mouse, which is hold down the right uh, mouse button and then left click and it brings it up. So make a box around here. It's selected all of those. And this is now need to be given a name, uh, which is going to be the landing gear. So press M on the keyboard. And here we can give it a name selection, which is wall gear. OK, so we've got our first one, which is wall gear <coughs> as the name selection. So next thing what we want to do is rotate this ever so slightly. So go back to single select. This is going to be outlet. This is obviously our inlet. Now the top and bottom is wall. And this surface here is symmetry. Okay, so all the name selections are done. And I always recommend doing the name selection before you start applying any mesh. Um, and then the last one, which is show all hidden faces. Side. Okay, so all the name selections are done. 
So the next thing what we want to do is click on the mesh, um, go to your details, and here again we want to make sure that this is ready for CFD. We want to make sure that the sizing, use adaptive sizing, we want to make sure that that's turned to yes. Okay, and we can then preview the surface mesh. So before generating the mesh, a volume mesh, we would check that the surface mesh is satisfactory. So in the outline, right click on the mesh objectives. So here, and what we want to do is go to preview and select um, surface mesh. So here you got this option where it shows mesh and doesn't show mesh. Um, so again, here we want to be able to select and show what the mesh looks like. Um, and here is very important that we, um, on the graphic window, select the left corresponding the minus X. Okay. And then here, what we want to do is we want to cut a view down the side. So again, here, selection plane cut a view down the side and we should be able to see what's happening here. So again, you can see uh, the front view, uh, what the mesh looks like, um, and it's a bit of a low quality, so taking kinds of surface curvature. So what we want to do is go back into the mesh sizing and it says use adaptive, change that to no, um, and capture curvature, we want to say yes. And the angle um, here, we want to change that to 24. And again here, right click, preview, surface mesh. And again, it just meshes the surface. And now you can see it's a lot more cla uh, clear and a lot more detailed around any of the curves, specifically the wheel and around the landing gear itself. So here uh, is a much better uh, mesh curvature. The surface mesh was also reduced to specify growth rate. Um, and in the detailed mesh, you have to set the curve normal angle to eight. Um, so here, change that to eight. And here, if we again, preview the mesh. You can see there's a lot more detail um, around there. So the smaller the angle, it will pick up a lot more detail around those key features. So by decreasing the curvature at normal angle, the refinement to the surface curvature increases. Um, now we can control the overing limits to the minimum and maximum using the relevant center settings. So in the detail mesh, set element size 5e to the minus 2. So make sure your units are in metric millimeters. So in the detail mesh, so uh, mesh element size. So the element size here is going to be 5e minus 2. And what you would see is once you press enter, uh, the other uh, element uh, minimum maximum coverage and minimum size values will change because of the dynamic update. So you can see that they've updated automatically. And again, preview the new mesh. So preview surface mesh. Okay, so you can see that they have become a lot more larger um, using the element size here of 0 0.005 um, around the edges. So once we review the surface mesh, changes cars for smaller mesh sizes in the far field and allowed smaller sizes where required on the surface. So the most important part is obviously the landing gear itself, where everywhere else it's not really relevant. So the mesh size has become a lot more larger. So we can do uh, refine some proximity as well, um, because there are some elements where there are some gaps specifically um, on the bottom edge um, of the model. And here we can able to fix this issue um, around the gaps side of things. So in the default, um, the proximity, um, what we wanna do is we wanna turn on the capture of proximity. So where it says capture proximity, press yes. 
and here what we want to do the number of cells is going to be um, default which is three um, and that's good so again here mesh uh, preview surface mesh and now wherever there was gaps um, um, it would have fixed that issue um, by making sure that there is a number of layers going between um, of minimum of three between uh, close proximity gaps. So we want to obviously look at the quality and it's very important of the mesh quality. So a, for a good quality volume mesh the main uh, value for the orthogonal quality should be greater than 0 0.4 uh, to 0 0.5 for surface mesh. So what we can do is go to the uh, quality mesh and we can select the orthogonal quality and we can see here uh, that our values are okay because um, it should be uh, uh, greater uh, than 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 for surface mesh so we're doing very very well here so uh, we can proceed um, and you may find some values slightly different uh, to the workshop values. This is because um, different computers have different ways of doing things and uh, therefore it's not a huge issue. Um, this is just a workshop just showing you the approach. So what we want to do is we want to add um, a inflation um, and in the mesh what we want to do is we're going to use the inflation from the global sizing rather than putting in a local and where it says the method here, we want to use all faces in chosen name selection. And here, we only want inflation on the landing gear, so wall gear. Um, and it's going to be 5, 1.2, um, and then leave that as it is. So the inflation option is total thickness. Um, so total thickness. Maximum thickness here is going to be 0 0.012 meters. Um, and then what we want to do is in the outline we want to uh, preview right click mesh objectives in the timer and preview the inflation so again preview inflation so now once you've done that we can generate the complete uh, mesh okay and as you can see now we have the inflation around the model and again um, using it section plane we can cut that and we can zoom in and see the inflation going around the whole body and that's needed and there's different ways of doing the inflation um, as you know uh, before so this is um, the tutorial done for this workshop um, and ready for the next one for an FEA model